Hey there, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amber and I am super excited that you're here today for these fall DIYs with me. So we've got bath mats, we've got shaggy, shabby bows. We, we need to figure out what we need to name the bow. You'll see, you'll see which one it is. Uh, we got napkins, bath mats, shaggy, shabby bows, and uh, animal print. I mean, why not, right? We got some animal print this week, and I just feel like it's really fun. These are really fun projects. They're kind of neutral. They're, I don't want to say they're super neutral, but they're definitely got more of a fall feel to them. You know, I've been doing some themes here on my channel with different things that may or may not feel fall, but they could tie into like a decorative element of fall if you have like, if you don't do the traditional fall decor, okay? So anyways, last week, my favorite project, I told you. I would tell you is the magnetic home with the thing. Like, I feel like that is like year round cuteness. Okay. You could transform that thing. Okay. So that one was my favorite. And then my other favorite was the placemat pumpkin with the grapevine. O M stinking G favorites. Okay. So if you missed last week's video, I'll put it in the description below. You can go check it out. But this week's video is going to be so much stinking fun. Okay. I love fall. I love Christmas. I love every, I love all kinds of crafting and, and DIY decor, but I really enjoy fall. I love the fall fun. So welcome to my channel. If you're not subscribed, like I said, go ahead and turn on the bell, uh, subscribe to my channel, introduce yourself in the comments below. Give me a thumbs up. And if you're returning, I'm so glad that you're back. And don't forget that I put out videos on my channel every Friday at 6 PM Eastern standard. And please consider joining us over on Facebook. We do live crafting in the evenings, mostly after 8 p.m. over there on Facebook. I'll also link my Facebook page in the description box below. Let's go ahead and get started with this week's video, and I can't wait for you to see what we're going to make. Let's go. <music> Okay, our first project is this super cute sign, and I really can't remember exactly where I got this napkin from. So if you're gonna ask me, I have no answers. I think someone sent it to me, but we're gonna be doing a napkin project with this one and using a piece of cardboard. So you don't have to have anything exceptionally like special for this project. You can actually use cardboard and make it look really cute. So we're just gonna separate the napkin, and most of the time they are one or two ply. Sometimes they're three ply. I think this one happened to be like three ply. So just be really delicate when you separate it. And then I just kind of pieced out and eyeballed like the size of this because we're using Jenga blocks to frame it, and I thought that was probably the smartest way to go about this, just to score it off, cut it out, and then glue everything together, and then trim it up as we needed to. So. You can see what I'm doing here with this one. I just used a piece of cardboard from a, I'm probably sure it's an Amazon box. I don't know, but you can use a piece of cardboard for this. So if you want to make something super cute and just play around with, you know, napkin crafting or trying it out. I know some people struggle with like getting all the wrinkles and bubbles out. So this would be a fun way for you just to try things. So I'm just trimming this out when I traced it and then we're going to go through and we're going to make it look super cute. <laughs> Now I did have this weird fold on the cardboard and I thought that I would use these popsicle sticks to help sure it up and it really does help but so does adding the Jenga blocks as well. So I just decided I'm going to glue them to the back where that fold is where the lid kind of folds over or the tops and the bottoms and that just kind of created a little bit more stability. So if, if you're going to do this just use a piece of cardboard that maybe you don't have to add this to but it wasn't necessarily required it's just for the piece of cardboard that I used it really was and then I basically am coating it with a coat of chalk paint you can use acrylic paint as well and I did cover it completely solid so it we're decoupaging so you can cover it like how do I explain it <laughs> in a dry brush way means if you do it in a dry brush not full coverage underneath the napkin it's going to look distressed but if you do full coverage when you apply the napkin it looks more solid and more clean so you can decide what finish you want to go with but your main paint finish that you put on is going to determine how the end result looks. So this looks really bold and bright because I did full coverage with the white paint. And I'm just going to use the saran wrap and the rolling pin and using my heat gun to apply the napkin. I don't really struggle with a lot of like bubbles or wrinkles. When I do that, you can certainly use the iron method 
there's so many different ways. There's no real wrong way to Mod Podge. And then I went ahead and glued together all of my Jenga blocks and I'm staining them all at once. And I just use paint and water and my favorite color is Burnt Umber. And I just mix it with a little bit of water and it helps stain and create a really cool like, mm, it's like a walnut color, I think. But it's, I use Burnt Umber. And I took this metal pumpkin off the stick and I found this other napkin with this really cute quote on it. And I wasn't sure when I made this if it would work because I was afraid you would see the napkin, like the napkin shape and not, it would just be really noticeable that it would look like a sticker or it was oddly applied. But in the end, you'll see when we added the Mod Podge and put on the napkin, it looked like the pumpkin that was metal just kind of came that way. So one of the really cool parts of using the napkin for this is that it, this was a corrugated pumpkin and so it fit in the ridges and it just like it was made that way. And then I lightly applied a little bit of water to my napkin to kind of saturate it and make it, I didn't really want to coat the top of it, make it glossy and make it look super noticeable that we added it with a napkin. But you guys look at that. It's so transparent. It's almost unnoticeable that it was a napkin that I applied. It looks like a stencil. And I just add a little bit of orange to kind of like hide the edges and blend them in and you would have just thought it came that way so we're gonna add on our jenga block frame to our cardboard and our super cute napkin and then we're gonna use uh what i think i wanted to do is use this burlap to create this really cool like look but in the end, I didn't really like the burlap layering. So it's completely up to you if you wanted to do it. I really didn't show that part. I just wasn't happy with how it looked. So we just went ahead and went simple with this one. Used some raffia to create a bow. We made a bead hanger. Super cute. Well, it's like a garland, not a hanger, but like a little tassel kind of garland thing. And then we raised this metal pumpkin up just a little bit to have it stand off. And I think it turned out really cute. But who would ever guess that this is a cardboard craft? I just think it's adorable. And you can use it and display it. And some people would know, maybe they won't know. But here's how it turned out in the end. I hope you love this one. And we're going to go on to this project. So this one is animal print. I've never done an animal print project for pretty much any season or even everyday decor. So I thought this would be really fun. So I found these two signs at the Dollar Tree and I'm gluing them, gluing them together. And then I'm going to paint it white because we're going to be adding a really fun finish with this tissue paper that kind of looks like birch wood. It looks just distressed. And I went ahead and painted the whole sign and we will add in some of the character later. But this is the tissue paper I was mentioning. You can use scrapbook paper. You can use a napkin. You could like draw out lines if you wanted to. Whatever background you want to create. I just thought this napkin went with this project. Or this tissue paper went with the project. And so just glue it on. It was a little bit difficult. But I did use my saran wrap to kind of smooth out any of the bubbles. Because there's like ends on it. And then I go in and just sand off the edges. And then I could not quite get in that fold, which I probably should have measured that. And I didn't. But I'm using my, like, exacto knife. And it was a little, it wasn't a clean cut, but it was good enough. And now we're going to take this wood slice that I got on Amazon. And we're going to decoupage that super cute napkin print on top of it and make a cute little pumpkin. So I added a little bit of white paint um, to the Mod Podge because I was like, oh, this is going to yellow a lot and I want it to be a little bit more brighter than it was. And so I just added Mod Podge, then I put a little bit of white paint over it, and then I did the rolling pin, and then we're just going to sand off the edges. And we're going to turn this into a super cute pumpkin. We're going to make it adorable. Now you can use um, a wood disc or you could use a piece of foam board. You can use whatever you want to recreate this and make it your own. So you don't have to necessarily have all the supplies that I did. Now this was wanting to bleed the pink through. And so I added the Waverly wax and then I ended up going back over it with some, I think, burnt umber paint because it just kept bleeding and bleeding. And then I added the pumpkin, of course, I just glued it on and then took the nautical like cotton rope from Dollar Tree and spread it out to look like a stem. And then I just added a little bit of brown paint to the fabric of it. And uh, that way I didn't have to soak it in like coffee or whatever. I just painted some, you know, paint over that stem. And then I'm going to make a little bit of a bow. And originally I wanted a this white flower. And then once I put it on, I decided I didn't like it. So 
I ended up going with the sunflower instead. I just felt like it was a better fit. And so we're just going to make a simple X bow and tie it together. And then we're going to put our raffia and sunflower on there. And we're just going to make it adorable. I'm just using some twine to tie it off. I really feel like there's probably a hundred million ways to make bows. So you can do whatever favorite bow you love. But I thought this one was a perfect choice. It's simple enough. It's not too overpowering. And you can see the white flower there that I just was like, I just feel like it's too much. It's too big. It's too much. So I took it off and used the sunflower. And I thought that was a little bit of a better fit for what we were going for. And then I added a little bit of Spanish moss to the bottom to kind of anchor the sign. I felt like it was a little top heavy with that bow and it needed a little bit of something at the bottom, but in the end it turned out really cute. So here's what it looks like. I hope you love this one. And again, you can make anything out of anything, right? All right. This one is got that bow I talked about and I don't know what to call it. I just call it like a shabby shaggy bow. But, you know, I'm pretty sure we can probably name it something fun. You can let me know what you think. But I had never seen anyone make a bow like the, this one. So trying new things. I'm always open to new ideas. So I'm just taking this picture frame from the Dollar Tree. And this one was a little interesting because I originally was going to use the back and it wasn't as sturdy. And then it had this like cutout on it. So I'm like, I can't decoupage this. So what I did is I glued the glass to the back. Then I took a Dollar Tree like cutting mat the, cl the, the clear ones, like a cutting mat, there was, it comes in like a two pack and I glued it to the glass and then I mod podged over that. I, I'm pretty sure we could have probably done this over the glass, but I was afraid when I started gluing stuff to it, that it would crack the glass. So I created like a barrier to protect it. So just think about that. If you're going to be like decoupaging this tissue paper, which we used before in, in the other project onto glass or a background, I'm sure there's a hundred ways we could have done this differently, but I got out my trusty saran wrap and my rolling pin and we went to town trying to decoupage this tissue paper onto this large surface and it did pretty well. And then I found these ovals at Dollar Tree and I'm going to turn them into a pumpkin. Now I had this vision that I was going to create this really cool finish on this pumpkin and try to custom color it to match the fabric that you see up there that's more of like a pumpkin-y coral and I just could not get the color right. I think if I would have spent a little bit more time on it I probably could have made the colors match but I was trying real hard to just get it as close as I could but in the end it didn't really matter. I wasn't I was happy with it because we were adding distressing to it anyways so I just took the deeper richer colors and created a distressed look on this pumpkin and we we're just gonna let it be really rough looking instead of super clean and finished, I wanted it to look a little bit more rustic. So that's kind of what I did with that. And then I decided I was going to make a stem out of these Jenga blocks because I just thought it needed something a little bit more stanchial than just a stick. And I needed it to stick up a little bit higher too. So I just took a few Jenga blocks and I added them to the pumpkins. And so I glued one to the back and then I just started stacking uh, four different Jenga blocks to create the stem. And now we're going to make this really fun bow. <laughs> this is, I have no real direction or step-by-step -step for this one because it was made literally on the fly. I was just dreaming up this bow, but I knew I had a vision that I wanted like this shabby, like rag type of bow, but not really a rag bow, but not really a messy bow. I just wanted it to have tails and be really cute. So this bow, I left the strips of fabric a little bit longer so that when I added them I could pinch them you'll see I just started adding stuff and we can just follow along but I ripped apart all the raffia and so here's what I'm talking about I left the strips super long and put the like the fold over at the top so that I'm able to pinch the bottom and create like this really cool tail but keep it like a full bow at the top and then I just started layering a little like shorter parts as I went so that we had like a stacked effect. So you can kind of see the, the different lengths of the bow. So just mess around with this type of idea and see how you like it. And then again, I just pinched it at the top and pulled all those loops together, tied the bottoms. And I feel like I've seen a, like a, a, a mesh bow maybe made like that, but I've never seen like a fabric bow made that way. Now I am adding these cute little bead type of tassel thingies into our bow. I don't know, again, just dreaming up ideas and trying new things and seeing how I like it. And I just basically glued them in. And then we're going to start assembling all of the parts. And I 
I was just absolutely impressed with how it turned out. Like it just turned out so cute and exactly what I was envisioning too. I think that the stem could have been a little bit taller and you could have seen it more, but overall I'm pretty happy with it. And I hope you guys enjoy this one too. Now I am adding a hanger to this and, um, I am also adding these like, what do you call them? Like these little curly cue type of things and leaves and just, just making it, this is basically the embellishment part. You can customize it to be whatever you want it to, but the little curly cues, the little coils that are on like a pumpkin stem, that's what I was putting into this. And I just used the wired jute from Dollar Tree and wrapped it around a pencil. It's super easy to do. If you don't have any wired jute, you can use a pipe cleaner. I just really like the look of the um, wired jute and how it ended up. But this is what we got. Hope you like this one. Love to know your thoughts. And this is our final project, and I am also in love with this one. So I picked up this frame from the Hobby Lobby on clearance. Who passes up on the clearance, right? And I took some, what was that, kilt wax, and I just waxed the entire frame. I didn't use paint. And then I am showing you how if you add a little bit of clear wax to your MDF, you can stain it in a way that almost looks like wood, like it's wood stained. So I was trying to match the finish on the frame. Now y'all, this is a bath mat and I loved the back of this mat and I loved that it was just part of the vision of like a boho type of feel for fall on the background of this frame. I just felt like it just went. And so run to your Dollar Tree, pick up a bunch of these mats because there's tons of things you can do with them. You can make pillows, you can cut them and do like I'm doing and layering them into like signs and stuff. It's totally up to you to use your own creativity. But I am going to glue this on and I'm just using a pencil to kind of score it to get the fit because, you know, on edges it likes to fray and become like uneven. And that way I was able to get the, a better fit and I had to kind of stretch it out when I did glue it down and make it where you couldn't really see the seams because I did undercut it just a smidge but once you start getting everything on it it actually turned out really cute and I just kind of glued in sections that way my glue did not dry in the process and I also did not want it to dip down into where that moon was and so I glued as I went just stage by stage by stage it was a larger surface and that way I was able to keep it tight and have more control and it didn't dip down into that spot so if you happen to have this frame and you got it on sale like I did Here's one way that you can use it. Now I am going to go in and make this super neutral. I thought this had a really high end look and looked really expensive. Like I envision like how can I create things that we can get like in Kirkland's or Hobby Lobby and make them ourselves and make them really cute that would even anyone guess that we made it ourselves or would they think that we bought it that way? So love the illusion of creating high end decor that we made ourselves for pennies basically. So I'm just hot gluing everything in layers because, again, I'm not really that great at bows. And so just get the thing done, right? So I just start stacking stuff. And I found those cute white leaves at Dollar Tree this fall. And I'm just gluing them right to that mat. I've laid on the gather sign that we stained with the brown stain. And I just think that it turned out so absolutely adorable. Actually better than I expected. But you guys, these were our projects this week. I hope you've enjoyed them. I would love to know what you think about each one of them. Again, consider subscribing to my channel and don't forget to check out other videos over here to inspire you. And we will be back again with another video next week. Hot glue does amazing things, right friends? Look at how cute that is. I'm really impressed. <laughs> but thanks again for being here and I'll see you guys on the next one.